Hey, good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day, and I hope you're having a great Tuesday. Uh, as we're continuing our study in the book of Mark, uh, we're in chapter 6 today, beginning the first verse. Uh, let me just ask you this question. Uh, how many of you have family? Now, all of us have some level of family. Maybe you have a lot of brothers and sisters. Maybe you have very few. Uh, uh, hopefully, they're still around. But uh, Here's the, the follow-up question. How many of your family really respect you or honor you? Uh, see, I've got three brothers, and uh, we love each other, but uh, th there's not a lot of honor between the brothers. Uh, there's some, uh, some respect that is given, but when we're together and the way we treat each other is not what anyone would uh, confuse for you know, being honorable toward one another. There's a lot of teasing and, and joking and kidding, and uh, we're, you know, we're not going to let each other get away with anything. It's, a lot of, it's mostly in good fun. I can't say it's all in good fun. It's mostly in good fun. But, uh, but our families oftentimes are our biggest skeptics. Uh, now, they may be our, our greatest defenders, but they're also our greatest critics, if you know what I mean. And, and the same is true in the life of Jesus. Uh, in Mark chapter 6, uh, he returns home to where he grew up. Follow along. Said so Jesus went away from there and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter's son, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at Jesus. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and among his relatives and in his own household. And Jesus could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. You know what got in the way of them believing in Jesus? The fact that they saw Jesus grow up in their midst. Now you think... I think they, they should have noticed how different he was, how special he was, but he was just Mary's kid. Uh, by this time, uh, Joseph is out of the picture, probably deceased. Uh, you know, traditionally, he would have been much older than Mary, and life expectancy wasn't very long. And, and so Mary is a widow, and Jesus was there taking care of his mom. Uh, he's got uh, these half-brothers. Uh, he's got half-sisters. And, uh, and his family was not a huge supporter of his ministry at this point and he came to his hometown and everybody's like well who are you to tell us how to live who are you to tell us about God you're just Mary and Joseph's boy and, and so they were the skeptics that kind of stopped him from really doing these amazing things that he was doing every place else and uh and that just is a is a crazy dynamic that happened in the life of the son of God savior of the world and, and it happens in our lives too you know, if Jesus has changed your life, and especially if it's been later in life, uh, but even if it was early, uh, the, the people of your family are oftentimes the greatest skeptics. Maybe they lovingly call you the religious fanatic or the Jesus freak. Uh, maybe it's not so loving in their uh, accusations or their names. But, uh, but if you're living out your faith in front of your family, you have a powerful opportunity for life change. Now, your family may not believe, your, your spouse may not believe, your kids may not believe, uh, your parents may not believe, but you have an opportunity to demonstrate the integrity of the gospel in their midst. And this is probably the hardest challenge you will ever face because not only do you have a history with them to overcome, but now they are watching you and judging you with a very harsh standard. And... Uh, but here's the thing, if we can really honestly live out our faith in front of our family, then the Holy Spirit will show up in a powerful way in your family and lives will be changed because of it. It can have a huge impact. Uh, you know, the Apostle Paul talks about that in 1 Corinthians, about how the unbelieving husband or wife can, can lead their spouse to Jesus. Uh, we know from story after story about how you know, people eventually will come around and believe. Uh, I've seen adult uh, parents uh, of adult children who, because Jesus changed their life, it impacted their children's lives. Even as adults, they came to faith. 
So I know the power is there, but it is very difficult when they're being harsh towards you. So what do we do? Uh, how do we approach this? Because some of them will never, ever give you the respect or honor that you deserve. Some of them will never, ever recognize the life change and acknowledge it as being real or acknowledge it as being significant for them. Um, so what do you do? Well, you listen to Jesus. You listen to the Apostle Paul. In, in Matthew 5, Jesus said, uh, you've heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be sons of your Father which is in heaven. In other words, if you want to show them Jesus, even when they are being rude and mean and nasty to you, you still need to be loving toward them. Why? Because they deserve it? No. Because Jesus asked you to do it. The Apostle Paul in Romans 12 said, Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Bless and do not curse. You, you want to win them over or at least have a chance to win them over? Then represent Jesus well with your words. Even when they persecute you verbally, you bless them. Don't give in to the cursing. Don't give in to the, the you know, games with words uh, and, and hurt that can be delivered. You just bless them. And, and I share this out of my own uh, heartache for uh, a brother of mine. I've got a brother who uh, we used to be very close. Uh, we went to seminary together. He was in ministry uh, for a while. And then he walked away from the faith. Uh, and, and, and for a long time when we'd get together, he would just attack verbally everything I believed, everything I stood for. And, and being his brother, uh, I just attacked back. And, and I'm kind of quick with words, and I would usually win, at least in the audience of the family. And it didn't do a thing for the gospel. And God finally convicted me, or I finally listened to the Holy Spirit, and I said, you know what, I'm not going to join the war anymore. I'm just going to bless and not curse now, that, that's how I've been in our relationship uh, for the last uh, decade or so. Uh, but my brother still hasn't come to Christ, or come back to Christ. I'm not even sure where he is in that journey. I'm still praying for him. Uh, still looking forward to that opportunity to share with him again. But, but here's the reality. No matter how he treats me, uh, I'm going to try and love him. I'm going to try and bless him. I'm going to try and encourage him. Because uh, whether he uh, comes to know Jesus or not, whether he comes to confess Jesus uh, or not, uh, I'm still going to set the example that God has asked me to set, the example that Jesus set in Nazareth so long ago. So I know you're out there, you're living the struggle, and some of you are very frustrated. Uh, don't lose heart. Hang on to doing what is right and let God honor you, even if your family doesn't. I hope that helps, and I hope you have a blessed day. God bless you, Calvary.